Good morning. And welcome. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, don't forget there's Bible study on Sunday evenings at 7 o'clock on Zoom. If you're not technologically savvy, you know, let us know and we'll try to help you figure out how to do that. Uh, but we're studying Revelation, so please uh, uh, take use of that opportunity. Also, at the next service, we have a baptism, a little Everly Rose. So we thank God today for a baptism. And finally, on the back of your announcement page, there's a little, like, attendance slip. There's no pens in the pew, so you might need to bring a pen with you or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, if, if we're going to try this. If you could fill that out and then uh, leave it in the offering plate or in the office after the service. We're going to try to start keeping track of attendance again. Now you can turn and greet your family.
This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the Pashon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good, delium and ox onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shout for joy in the Lord, all you righteous. 
Praise befits the upright. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. Righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the The epistle is from Romans, chapter 6, and this will serve as the sermon text today. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you're now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel is from Mark chapter 8. We read together. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We now say the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We now confess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that by your grace you have gathered us together. You have made us your children, and we your people. We pray that you would grant that we may hear again with the ears of faith, that your spirit might work as promised, that we'd be moved to an even greater faith, and that we may learn to serve you as we love one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, it's really important, it seems to me as Americans, that we find our own way in life. It's kind of what we get taught from early on, isn't it? Think about how many graduation cards for high schoolers and, and gifts there are with, which have those sentiments like we need to take the path less traveled. We need to hew our own way in life. We can be our own man, and we ought to be our own person, and, and we can dictate for ourselves the direction and the trajectory of our lives. We hear that time and time again, and it gets taught to us, well, until it just becomes assumed to be a part of our lives. Part of it, you think about a, it's a generation whose entire anthem seemed to be, I did it my way. And yet, even if many people today don't know that song, well, they still kind of live by its creed, don't they? They're going to live it their way. And nobody can tell them what to do. For what underlies this whole idea is that we believe we are free, totally free in every way, and that we can make our own future because we are those masters. But can we really do that? I mean, is anybody able to determine completely how they're going to interact with other people, uh, what their future will be in, in jobs and occupations? I mean, while we like to claim that on a philosophical level, at the same time, there's a whole debate about what influences us. Is it nature or is it nurture? Are we the people we are because of our genetics? That we have taken certain ways of thinking, certain ways of being, ways of speaking and talking and thinking, well, from simply the genetic code that we have? Or is it because of nurture, because of our environment and the way we were raised and what we were taught? The mere fact that we have that debate tells us we're not nearly as free as we think we are. That on a, on a social level, that we, we are much more, much more confined than we think. And if that is true on a, a social level, what are, what are we talking about spiritually? Well, biblically, the Bible is very clear. It's impossible to be our own person. There's no nature versus nurture argument at all. Biblically, it's impossible to be our own man. We are controlled either by sin on one hand, which when it's unchecked leads to lawlessness, or we are, on the other hand, controlled by the Holy Spirit, and we pursue righteousness. That is the way the Bible thinks. That's the way the Bible works. It's not the way we want to think about things, but it's the way the Bible does. It's the way God thinks about things, and it's the way that we have to live and work in our lives. For we are either controlled by sin, and we give in to its impulses, we don't fight its desires, and eventually that leads to lawlessness, where we, we make up our own law, where we truly are autonomous, where we simply are people who are going to decide what is right and wrong and good and beneficial without heed to anyone or anything else, much less God. And this is exactly what people in our world see as freedom. And Paul says it is freedom, but it's freedom from righteousness of God. It's freedom from the path that God has laid out for people to walk in His law, to walk in His grace. We're either controlled by the Spirit or we're controlled by sin. 
And when we're controlled by the Spirit, well, that means we desire the things of God. It means we, we desire to hear God's Word. We desire to love our neighbors as ourselves and, and to walk in that way. You see, that is the choice. We either here or there. We're either part of the kingdom of Satan or we're the part kingdom a part of the kingdom of God itself. And there is no in between. St. Paul says that we are, are we in our natural capacities are in servitude to one or the other. That we cannot be our own person. Though either it's Satan or the Spirit of God that rides this person and controls him and moves him. We are not our own. We belong to one or the other. Now, we, we like to pretend that somehow between the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God, that there's this in-between area in which we can live. We like to think that sometimes we can move over in here and live when it's comfortable and somehow or another control what Satan's going to do and, and work in us and through sin. And, and we like to think that we can turn it around and, and live for God on our own terms. But it can't be that way. Paul, Paul says it's just the opposite. For the issue at hand is simply this. To whom do we place our members? Who, to whom do we give our natural capacity, our thoughts, our gifts, our abilities, our desires? Who are they at the disposal of? Who is the one using them? Because one or the other is. You see, there's a huge difference between the two. Sin leads to death. That is what is earned. Paul is clear on that as well, isn't he? The wages of sin is death. And that, my friends, is our natural state. What the world proclaims as freedom is death. What it means is that when we do what is natural for people to do, we find ourselves at odds with God. To follow that path, to follow that things of Satan, to have at the disposal of sin and death our very being means we follow the path of immorality and drunkenness and ease. That means we follow our own hearts and we lead them straight into death. When people do this, and so often we seem, even as Christians in our weaknesses, to concur with them, that they are simply sampling who they are to be. This is freedom, indeed, but freedom from the life itself. It's freedom from the things of God which brings true life. It is freedom from the service to others. It is freedom, yes, but it's a freedom that says no to the life that God brings. And it's freedom that brings nothing but death. For the wages of sin is death. But when our members are offered up to God and to righteousness, well, that leads to holiness and life eternal and life that starts now. If you see, that's a gift of God. Because when we are born, we're born here in the kingdom of Satan. And we are transferred, we are rescued and brought in to the kingdom of God. And that is the gift of God that leads to eternal life. And life now, in this moment, not just when we die, but we begin to live that life today, right now, through faith. For there we find the very gifts of God. We find the gifts of God that are working within us, where we have been rescued, and now we belong to our Creator, not the adversary, but to the one who belongs as God. And our God is no longer our belly, our gluttony, and the desire to fill all of our desires, whether they be physical or emotional or mentally. What it means is we have been baptized into Christ and brought into the one who satisfies every living thing with every gift we need. You see, there is life. It is life that's lived in the service to God, for it's either in service to sin and Satan or God and his way of life. And there is no in-between. But we have been given this gift 
tonight at the late service there's going to be a baptism and it's not simply a baptism because it's a cute thing that we need to do for babies it's not a dedication ceremony what it is is a baptism it is a God at work in the life of a child who is born into the kingdom of Satan, whose members are at work against God, and he is rescued and brought into God's children to be a part of God's people. That is what we live in. It is the free gift of life today that we live for Christ. So the question is, is how can we present ourselves how can we present our hearts? How can we present our minds, our words? How can we present our activities to uncleanness? For we have been taken from that which brings us death and been brought into life. What does darkness, what does the darkness of sin have to do with the light of Christ? What does drunkenness in this world have to do with the spirit of Christ? What does the pursuit of lust have to do with faithfulness to someone's spouse? What does ease have to do with the desire to serve one another and to love one another as we love ourselves? No, you see, Christ has broken the rule of Satan, the rule of sin. He has broken the rule of death. And now we belong to God, to God alone. We sang about this a few minutes ago, didn't we, in that, that hymn. Cast every idol from its throne, for God is God and he alone. And the idols we cast are those thoughts of our minds, the activities of our hands and feet, the words of our lips, the desires of our hearts that are not in conformity with God. Those are the idols that are cast aside, for Christ has broken the rule of Satan once and for all. That is the gift of baptism, and in faith, that is what we live in. For he has called on our entire being to be put at the disposal of Christ. He has called for our entire being to live in the grace that belongs to Jesus alone. Paul puts it this way in another place. We are not our own, for we were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your bodies. It's saying the same thing, isn't it? So live in the freedom of Christ. Anything else that promises freedom outside of Christ and his way is nothing more than an enslavement to death. It's an enslavement to the things that will not bring life and goodness in this world, but will bring only death now and in eternity. We have been set free. We have the free gift of God in Christ Jesus. So let us live and let us rejoice in that freedom that Christ has won for us. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. To God all glory. Amen. We worship the Lord now with our offerings. Please bring them forward.
Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, merciful Lord, all men are slaves, either slaves of sin or slaves to you. Set us free from sin and its desires that we may serve you in everlasting righteousness and innocence and blessedness. Turn us away from lawlessness, cast out all idols from our hearts and sanctify us by your word and spirit. By your grace, lead us to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask your blessing upon this congregation and all its members. This week, we especially pray for the Philip family, Donna Flynn, Joyce Fulcarelli, Kenneth J. Fry, and Kenneth L. Fry. Give to all an increase of faith and hope and love. And we thank you this day for the baptism of Everly. We thank you for adopting all of us into your family and for gathering this wonderful family here in Fraser. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the United States of America, the state of Michigan, our cities, including the city of Detroit. We pray for those who are in leadership, including President Trump and Governor Whitmer and all the governors. We ask that they would make wise decisions for the good of all and that your gospel would flourish in our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you would be in our homes, that our homes would be a place sanctified by the word of God in prayer. We ask that you bless all marriages and be with all children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, also bless our school and its teachers as we open up for another academic year. We ask that we can gather here in this place safely, that all would stay healthy, that the children would be able to learn and grow, and that they would see Christ in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, be with those who are sick and suffering and experiencing various difficulties of life. We pray for Margaret Spencer, Ruth Katowski, Don Shepler, Jim Mish, and all those we now name in our hearts. Father, provide for them strength and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, who, whose never-failing providence orders all things in heaven and on earth, we humbly implore you that you would put away from us all hurtful things, and give to us only those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen.